So <clears throat> I start with this tweet, which is something about decorators in Python. And it says right here, decorators clearly explain. Let me just get on my little drawing tool. Decorators clearly explained right over here. And decorators are one of the most powerful features of Python. However, understanding them can be a bit overwhelming. That's kind of like not really true, but it is sort of like true in a way. Um, some people refer to decorators as syntactic sugar, um, which, which is you can do everything in code that you can do with a decorator, but it, the decorator just you can do it in fewer lines of code, basically. So today I will clearly explain how decorators work is the title of this actual tweet. But I'm not actually going to go into the title. Uh, I'm not actually going to go into decorators as the title of the tweet. I have covered it in another video before. And I thought, you know, I'll kind of like go and have a look at this. And so I sort of kind of click on it. There's no particular link, but what it is is a series of tweets. And the first thing that I come to is something that really kind of like I'm going to say annoys me every time I see this because we've already got something complicated which is a decorator and I'm just going to kind of like zoom in here and I've kind of like already highlighted the words we've already got something complicated so what is a decorator and is this complicated thing but the first thing that, that, that this comment says is before we jump into one decorator uh, on two decorator we must understand that functions in pythons are first class objects and the number of times i've seen this is um, tremendous so i thought well what is a like what is a first class object you just told everyone you that these are first class objects, but everyone who's learning about decorators is probably is learning python and they don't know what a first class object is so, so let's actually just debunk what a first class object is so i thought in order to do that i will stick that straight into google bard which i've got open somewhere or you could stick into chat gpt anywhere you could google it as well like i could probably google up a first what is a first class object so first class object okay and then python example right maybe something like that but anyway i'm going to go to the bard definition but here what was an example of it is it, like so there's plenty of examples we're hoping bard's going to be fine i'll read this one out because i've got it here anyway but a first class object i'm, I'm just reading this one here a first class object is an entity that can be dynamically created destroyed passed to a function returned as a value and have all the rights and other as other variables in a programming language you know stack overflow has got it uh, so this thing actually comes from stack overflow that's from someone's opinion um, there'll be geeks for geeks it'll be all, all of these different um, sites basically telling us what it is so i figure you know you can just go and stick this into bard straight off the bat so i go and type it in what is a first class object in python or any language let me zoom in on that as well Right, there we go. So that's quite, quite nice. Um, scroll down to the actual question. Yeah, what is a first class object in Python or any language? So in programming, a first class object is an entity that can, that can be one, created at runtime. What does this mean? Whole explanation here. Um, objects that are created, created at runtime, just like any other variable. Okay. Um, whatever that means it appears to me is anything that you can create pass as a parameter okay so the arguments to functions basically is for these things that are passed in parameters and you can in python you can pass functions as parameters as you can do in pretty much every language i think that i've seen actually so i'm wondering why um the mention of first class objects kind of like in python we have to remember in python I, I think it's true for most languages but by all means comment on the video if it's not true or, or something in another language returned as a value okay so the return of a function is a first class object in itself okay fine so for example in python you can return a first class object from the def keyword there we go assigned as a variable so basically like i'm looking at this and i'm thinking well 
pretty much everything is a first class object. In Python, first class objects, functions are first class objects. This means that you can do all of the things listed above with functions. For example, you can create a function at runtime, pass a function as a parameter to another function, and so forth. So we can do all of these things in Python. And now here's some examples of first class objects. So that's quite useful. So a function, let me actually create some of these and then we're going to see my aversion to this or whatever. But so def function and let's just return 100 and print function. If we run our piece of code, I'll actually hit clear so we can see again. So and zoom in on the code a bit. So control plus plus plus. There we go. So I run this function. So I run this module and the function runs, and there we go, we get 100. So this thing here evaluated to 100, we got 100, and that's all first class. Well, great, fantastic. Lists. So my list equals one, two, three, four. So we're told that this is a first class object and I don't know, I guess I can, I can print my list again. My list and all runs as normal. Lists of first class objects. And then it keeps going on. Dictionaries are first class objects. Strings are first class objects. I'm like, well, that means that everything's a first class object. So if everything is a first class object, Here's my next question. Provide an example of a second class object in Python. Yeah, sure, in Python, a second class object is an entity that can be passed as a parameter. Mm, that seems a bit contradictory, but we'll, we'll, we might let Bard off sometimes because it, it's a large language model. Sometimes it, it um, maybe confuses these things. Because, and the reason I say that is because somewhere above in our definition, it says pass as a parameter here. So it, it's both first, something that passes a parameter now classifies as both first and second class objects. Ooh, that's a bit contradictory. You're either first or second, but maybe maybe you can be first and second class at the same time, simultaneous first and second class. We'll let part off, but secondly, returned as a value. I think we saw that above as well. But and then it comes down to um, some examples, and maybe that would be the best way of seeing what a second class object is in like literally give me an example of something that's second class that isn't first class so in python there are no true second class objects however and i think that's the key so this statement originally over on twitter which i'll drag back on here we don't need to remember that functions are first class objects in python because everything appears to be a first class object in python there are some things that are called second class objects they might and even then it says however some objects are considered to so that might be considered to be second class objects are lambda expressions okay so the lambda function i guess um, Lambda um, I might actually do in Bard itself, I'll do it that way. I'm just gonna be quite quick, but example of Lambda. Just gonna get a quick example out so that I can copy and paste it straight into the into our little code and just for the purpose of seeing what a second class function might look like right here we go that's good enough so this is considered to be i was actually trying to get the syntax right i was heading the right way but i just wanted to make sure so this here might be considered to be a second class function which is um let's actually call it as well so print double five there okay print so double is actually a function itself and 
then five, and then we, we you know we'd get ten back from that because it'd be two times x. So that's actually our, and here we get our number ten back from this function. So it, this is potentially a second class function. And the same thing is true for generators. And again, we could sort of like look and see what a generator is, but that's potential. But the reality is, is that everything's considered to be a first class function. So I think that's, it's kind of like the piece said on there. We don't need to, so when it comes to these decorators and we uh, consider, or when you comes to anything in these explanations and you see that a function is, um, a function is a first class object, uh, in Python, um, it, it's kind of like a bit of an irrelevant meaning in a way. And what was the last piece that I was going to do on this? Potentially second class function. So I think just the final piece is just to clear everything up on this matter. Is are there third class functions? Are there third class, I won't call them functions, uh, objects in Python, question mark. And the answer is probably going to be no, or bad. But never know, these, loud these large language models do, um, do sometimes say things to please you. But here we go. No, there are no third class objects in Python. The term first class object and second class object are used to describe the capabilities of an object in a programming language. The first class objects have all the capabilities that are listed above, while, and that was all the capabilities that we mentioned up, that were given up here, basically, in our first class object. And While second class objects have some of the capabilities of first class objects, but not all of them, the term third class object is sometimes used to describe objects that have even fewer capabilities. So maybe there's, okay, this first classing or this classing of objects is the number or amount of capabilities that it has. But then it says here, however, there are no objects in Python that fall into this category. All objects in Python have at least the same capabilities as second class objects some a second class object can possibly do slightly less than the first class object the term first class object and second class object are not strictly defined so when somebody says you have to remember that this is a first class object it has it doesn't even have a strict different definition and there is some disagreement about what they mean yes and i'm going to add confusion onto the word disagreement it's kind of like and I'm trying to explain something complicated to you already, and I just throw in some extra piece of um, complication, no one layer more of complication. Let's just say that a function in Python can do everything in the same way, or we can we can pass it around in the same way, or amend it in the same, or, or do things to it in the same way that we can a variable. That's all it really means. However, the general idea of a, is that first class objects are more powerful and flexible than second class objects. So that that sentence doesn't add anything, but more importantly, we've kind of like debunked what first class objects are in Python. Um, and when you do see that kind of expression, maybe it should glaze over because um, we just have to remember that um, well, we see first class, so since everything's first class objects, it's part of the everything category. So um, it, it's a bit of a mute statement. So we don't have to remember that functions are first class objects. We just have to remember that functions are part of the language. And um, that's, that's good enough. And that would cover everything in the, at least to the point of uh, getting to this point, and then we can then move on to decorators without having to worry about or what was a first class function in the first place. Now, here we've got the same kind of definitions that come out. It means that functions can be okay, passed around as an argument. Well, that's true, used in expressions. 
So we can pass it around. Here's our function. We've created a function, possibly somewhere. I'm trying to see where this function's created. Pass as an argument. Okay, yeah, so this function here, we, so we can pass greet in here, for example, uh, at where we've got um, function. And finally, it can uh, re return values as other functions. So basically, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not going to go any further. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it here because I have done a video on decorators before, and there's, there's lots of um, lessons and stuff out there. And this isn't actually a tutorial on decorators, but it's more about understanding maybe um, what the meaning of a first class function is and maybe i'll just add one last piece which is basically something like this define a second function right which basically takes in an argument and it could be any argument so a like that and we'll put in B as well, right? But actually what happens in this second class function, oh, oh sorry, our second function, not second class function, just our second function, is that we can call it. So we can go second function, and guess what we can do? We can pass in our first function. That's the meaning of this first class decorator. We can pass it in, it's not gonna throw any errors. And then B, we could just say it's like number 10. And we could do something with this in Python, just like this, so caps lock, print, I don't know, print a, and I guess we might have to, I, I wonder if this will just work on its own. And then also let's just print out B as well, just for the sake of it, we'll pass something in and run and we'll actually even write this print inside the second function i could have called it something more useful like the calling function or something else but inside the second function and try to run this piece of code i'm hoping it's going to work off the bat yes it does and all that's happened is we've passed in the function here let me just get out my drawing tool. We run this, when we run our code, second function runs, but it actually calls this first, and that's what we're calling a first function. We're just saying we can pass that this function straight into here. So we pass that in, straight in, that goes straight into here. And then inside our second function, it's now, that's passed in as, that's this parameter A, which is now inherited or, or, or been given the parameter of um, function. And then we can call our function, we did print A, and it printed out, I guess we're inside the second function, I just noticed a typo, I'll put the little E there for a correction, and inside the second function, and then we've got 100, that was this actual function running, there's the 100 over here, Now, I just like to, like, because I've, okay, I haven't used every language, but I've used um, C++, Node, VBA, I think um, a couple of other languages on the side as well, but, but, you know, programming those, you know, Python, they all behave the same way. You can pass functions in as arguments to other functions, ways of doing it. So kind of like, um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And the decorator, it leverages off of this feature, but that's all it really means. So basically that is first class functions in, or first class objects, not functions, first class objects, I keep saying functions. First class objects in Python and functions are those as well as variables and all the rest of the things. So that's it, if you, if you, if you found this useful, um, hit the like button, do the sharing, forward on to others, and um, if you've got any comments, if, if anything's wrong at any point over here, also mention that. And if there's any, yeah, if there's any errors or anything as well, by, by all means mention it. I do everything live, so there might be a lot of umming and ahhing, but I like to do coding live rather than pre-preparing things because this is actually how it works and kind of like how 
I don't know, the user thinks about it. So I'm signing off, and uh, yeah, great watching.